Hey, good afternoon. How's everybody? Hi, Professor. How are you, Monique? <laughs> How are um, you feeling? You sound like you sound like you're. Uh, um, are you are you okay? You sound like you're like in a hospital bed. <laughs> no, I'm fine, Professor. I'm fine. I'm just having trouble with the system here, so. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm yeah, a little I'm glad frustrated. I'm a little frustrated oh, well. today. Well, uh, yeah. Well, um, you know, it's it's you know uh, we're almost you know um, we're just about one week, one week you know from uh, from the end of the uh, summer too, right? We are just one week away, so it's a it's a really crunch time, right? You may have noticed. A couple of no, uh, oh, uh, I hate to remind you, but you know, let me share my. <laughs> um, how are you, Sarah? Are you there? Yeah, let me just share my screen just to remind you what, uh, just to give you heads up, right? Just to give you heads up, uh, what's you know, lying ahead of you. I first check the discussion board to see how many are there. Let's see. Uh, today is 11th. Okay, it looks like we have. Um, Well, five people uh, other than myself, so there should be more people in the air. But anyway, um, the point is, I'm sure this must be, um, okay, you're, everyone is aware that the uh, midterm is due today, right? Everyone is aware. Right, the midterm is due. Yes. Okay. And if you haven't got started, please uh, don't procrastinate it until the last minute because um, I can't. There is, there is, there isn't anything. There isn't much I can do when you, when you run into, let's say, some technical issues. You know. Um, uh, for example, you were in the middle of the exam and the, uh, the you lost the internet connection. I mean, there's nothing I can do if you if this happens like you know uh, uh, ten minutes before the uh, deadline, right? Uh, I wouldn't know if something happened to you. I mean, you might send me an email, but at the last minute, there is no response time. There is no, not enough response time. There's nothing I can do. Um, and uh, you might say, you know, uh, I mean, I, if you email me like at least 12 hours ahead, I can discover that email and I can reset the exam for you. Uh, but, you know, uh, uh, if you send me an email at a, a very short notice, um, there isn't much I can do, okay? And I'm, I'm not watching my email like 24 hours uh, around the clock. I, I'm not, I don't do that. So uh, if you send email, you know, uh, at the last minute, Nothing can be done. It cannot be reset in time for the uh, uh, deadline. Okay, and some people uh, may think, you know, uh, um, if you know, if uh, some people may think, you know, uh, it can be extended. No, look, uh, there are tons of things to do. I mean. Midterm cannot be uh, extended. Any, nothing can be extended because if this is extended, uh, then you will, you know, everything will be pushed back. 
Homework three will be pushed back. Homework four will be pushed back. Homework five will be pushed back. Final will be pushed back. It cannot be done because we have only one week left and I don't have, I have a grading window. I mean, grade reporting window. I must report uh, the grades to the, I must submit the uh, grades to the registrar within 48 hours. So our last class, last day of class is the 19th. So I must report, submit the grades within 48 hours, you know, which is, you know, um, uh, Saturday, end of Saturday, right? End of Saturday, uh, which is 21st, you know, end of, so if things get pushed back, there's no way I can do, do the grade, okay? If I can't, if your data is missing uh, until, you know, I need, I need at least 48 hours to, you know, um, uh, compile the data and um, issue a grade and submit it to the registrar. I need at least 48 hours. So if you don't do things that are, you know, that you're uh, supposed to do, by, you know, the scheduled timeline, then, you know, uh, there is no way. I mean, you, there is no, the data will be missing. I mean, you, if you can't submit it by the designated due date, uh, which, you know, for midterm two, it is today, right? Uh, there will be no data for that. In other words, your exam uh, midterm will be completely blank. Okay, there is no score for midterm. And uh, homework three is due uh, this weekend, Sunday. Uh, so let me let me share this with you because everything is already you know. Uh, so that's why um, I sent out this sent out this email to yesterday. Uh, the importance of getting a head start because if you there is no there is no use it cannot be no, nothing can be done if you uh, send me email at the last minute you know crying out you know uh, uh, you lost the internet you know uh, uh, while you are working on the exam blah 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 there is nothing I can do if you you know, there's no, there's no use sending email like you know at the last minute, okay. And then homework three, uh, this was already you know it went out, and then uh, it's due Friday this Friday due this Friday, and then. Homework four will go out and it will be, it's just not, you know, it will go out on uh, Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, which is, <laughs> and it will be due Monday. It's just not there. And homework five will have to go out. Uh, it will go out on Monday and it will be due 19th, last day. And then final, I haven't, you know, I haven't uh, updated the wording for uh, the final, but you know, that simply, you know, that, that already explains, you know, uh, we have only one week left and this one week will be a, a very tight one week, right? You got everything falling in, um, in, the, uh, in this coming week. It's going to be a really crunch time, right? It's going to be a crunch time. So please, you know, uh, uh, please, you know, uh, be advised that you need to stay uh, ahead of the game and you need to uh, um, always get a head start, okay? So uh, let me, since I'm uh, already sharing my screen, let me. So uh, our uh, yesterday, 
I posted uh, everything in the, uh, okay. I posted, where is this course material? And then I posted everything uh, we did yesterday. Actually, uh, you are supposed to, um, review the uh, recordings of financial statements. I mean, uh, uh, these are like the three, uh, all of them will take about six hours, right? So I ask you to, you know, uh, uh, to be very diligent. And uh, of course, all of them were already Done, you know, um, financial statements intro, you know, last available August 7th, right? So that they were already, you know, uh, past uh, last available August 8th, they were already August 9th, August ratio analysis, August 9th, which was, you know, so. Um, Um, because there's absolutely uh, no time, not enough time to uh, uh, go over everything, everything during the collaborate session. Um, I linked uh, the review of the uh, uh, I linked the review of financial statements there you to watch and even that session <laughs> where you are supposed to watch uh, the whole thing was you know um, yesterday's session was also you know uh, updated there and we are the and since it takes too much time and um, um since your homework three is due this Friday, we need to um, at least review uh, the ratio analysis, right? Um, assuming that everything was you know, covered by the uh, uh, those um, reviews, you know, um, the video recording of the reviews. Um, let me, uh, let me go to, um, ratio analysis. So, um, here's the break even. I got to talk about the break even analysis too, but, uh, let's do this. Okay. Let me briefly, um, Let me briefly talk about the uh, 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 break-even analysis. So let's think about what break-even, uh, and I wonder if I put it here, did I put it? No, I don't think I put it there, but that's okay. I'm gonna have to, uh, A lot of these things. I don't know if I can do break even. Even uh, okay. So um, I think I will use this. Uh, Okay, so what is the uh, what's the concept of uh, uh, break-even? 
Now, uh, literally, the word break even means, you know, uh, uh, the company is breaking even between uh, profit and, uh, I mean, revenue and cost. Okay. Um, so let me. Break even. Literally, you know, um, uh, so if the company breaks even uh, between uh, revenue and cost, uh, that means profit is zero. Okay? So, of course, um, no, there's no there's no one, no company that wants to just break even. The point is, uh, you, nobody wants to break even. You want to, you want to um, make profit. So that means, you know, uh, 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 at least if you know the break even point, right? Uh, what you can do is you can produce and sell above that level, right? Uh, then that means, you know, uh, you, you always, um, if you produce and sell above that level, then your profit is guaranteed. You will always have a positive profit. That's what, you know, uh, that's the point of the break-even analysis. Um, in other words, you perform break-even analysis to serve, uh, to use it as a guide, to use it as a guide to um, To know the uh, uh, output level, to know the production level, that will bring you profit. So uh, again, uh, break-even means uh, profit is zero. That means, what does that mean? That means uh, there's total revenue uh, equal to total cost. Right, that's correct. And who said that? Uh, Sarah. Sarah, okay, Sarah, yes. So at least, you know, um, at least one person is, you know, <laughs> paying attention. That's a good thing. Um, because I'm, I'm almost, you know, doing it like, you know, blind. You know, I'm doing this blind because uh, you, while I'm w looking at this uh, Excel file, um, that's exactly what I'm looking at. Uh, I cannot look at the uh, Blackboard. This is... As I said, I have only a single monitor. It's not like I have multiple monitors. So while I'm looking at this um, spreadsheet, that's that's the only thing I can look at. I cannot, you know, it's not like you know, uh, I can watch also uh, the blackboard at the same time. So I'm, you know, asking you from time to time uh, when I hear some, you know, a prompt sound from like ding now there's a you know, prompt sound that sounds like ding uh on blackboard that means somebody is you know somebody just wrote something in the uh chat box but there's no way i can uh verify that because i have to get out of i have to close this or minimize this uh expression and you know switch to uh, uh blackboard but if I don't do that, you know, while I'm looking at this, there's no way I can see. Okay, so um, today is 11th, and Sarah, yes. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna give you 0 0.25, uh, extra point for that. So um, what does this mean? If uh, total revenue, if total revenue is equal to total cost, right? Then you know, uh, by definition, right? Uh, 
what is profit? Profit is uh, by definition, right? Uh, so I'm gonna. By definition, total revenue minus total cost. And the only way uh, the only way this can be zero, right? The only way this can be zero is when total revenue is equal to total cost. So the point is, this is not what we want, right? Uh, it only serves as a, uh, a guide because what we want is actually we want this to be positive, right? We want the profit to be positive or total revenue minus total cost to be greater than zero, right? Isn't that right? So nobody wants to just break even, right? Um, so here, um, uh, just, you know, let me get back to uh, uh, this diagram. So we all understand that the uh, total, um, total cost consists of total variable cost and total fixed cost. Right. Remember that total variable cost is the cost that you know uh, varies with production level. So total variable cost can be broken down into a uh, uh, average variable cost uh, times quantity built. Okay, quantity built. And here's also um, uh, in the video I explained uh, that uh, revenue is price times quantity sold. And of course, there's, uh, there can be difference. There can be difference between the quantity sold and the quantity built, right? Uh, quantity of products that you build. I mean, normally there, there's some, there can be some discrepancy. And usually, you know, uh, you may overproduce, right? There is no way you can oversell because you know you cannot sell something that you don't have. But if you, uh, but if there is more demand than than supply, more demand than uh, what you have produced, then you can always increase production. I mean, uh, if you can meet that uh, extra demand uh, in time, right? Uh, uh, then you know. Uh, uh, there's nothing. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, you know, uh, there's nothing. Um, what I'm saying is, you know, you can, um, you can, if there are, you know, uh, if the demand. Uh, exceeds supply by 10%, right? Uh, you may not meet that demand right now, but in the next round of the market or next, uh, this if you can't meet the demand this month, I mean, you can meet at least 100%, then the, the, the excess demand will push up the price, which will be, uh, which is, a motivation or an incentive for your company to produce 10% more, uh, which can uh, be sold in the next month. Or, you know, this, if you can respond to the excess demand uh, quickly enough, uh, you can uh, you can increase sale by 10%. But if you don't meet the that increased demand, uh, uh, quickly enough, then it will be picked up by your competitor. It will be picked up, right, by your competitor. But uh, everyone tries to, every producer tries to uh, uh, meet the demand by um, by crank by cranking up the production. But again, uh, 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 the point is, um, 
again, you know, uh, if, if your production capacity has maxed out, right, you're running at 100% production capacity. And if the demand is, you know, 10% more than your production capacity, um, you, uh, you cannot instantaneously increase your uh, production, right? It will have to be met in the... Uh, 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 in the future or the excess demand, or you will have to increase your production capacity by 10%, which means, you know, physical expansion of your uh, company, physical expansion of your plant, right? But then physical expansion takes time. It will take at least, you know, uh, uh, six months to one year, or it could be one or two years, you know, because you, that means you have to uh, build a uh, new plant, new factory, right? New equipment, you have to put new equipment into it. So the capacity will be, you know, uh, 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 you know twice the current capacity uh, or at least uh, 150 times the current capacity. Uh, but either way, you know, that, uh, in the meantime, while the, uh, uh, new plant is being built, you know, uh, you will miss out on uh, the that excess demand, right? And your competitor will uh, pick it up. So, um, but, you know, uh, the point is um, the quantity built is not always the quantity sold. Usually, uh, you may overproduce, right? Remember? You may over overproduce. You may produce more than. Uh, and uh, why does this happen? It happens, you know. Uh, it happens quite often. It happens all the time. Why? Uh, maybe not all the time, but it happens very often. Why? Because of the uh, um, uh, the, the demand forecast. Because of the demand forecast and uh, being inaccurate. I mean, demand forecast may not be, you know, may not nail it all the time. I mean. Demand forecast cannot be uh, exact. I mean, um, even if the demand forecast had no, you know, um, was as exact as it could be, was as, uh, even if the demand forecast was as accurate as it could be, but then re in reality, I mean, the forecast was made a year ago, um, and now, so it's... Uh, so year after, a year after now, uh, the reality may be different from the forecast. You understand? Um, so uh, some unforeseen variables, right? Some you know, um, totally uh, unexpected variables. Uh, when there are things, you know, uh, uh, that's the reality, you know? Uh, whatever, whoever, who, you know, who would have ever thought, who, you know, this was an, uh, a pandemic, COVID-19, this was an ad hoc variable. It wasn't, in other words, it was totally, you know, unpre you know, that was unpredictable, right? There was no way uh, the, uh, the pandemic, uh, impact of pandemic was this pervasive, right? And nobody even... Uh, outside the, uh, you know, uh, uh, expert circle, like, you know, uh, medical professionals, even among medical professionals, <clears throat> COVID-19 was not even, you know, known back in, you know, uh, only a handful of, you know, uh, 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 virologists, you know, um, uh, would have known. So, um, that's that's the reality, you know. Um, the forecast can, you know, uh, overshoot the reality. The forecast can overshoot the demand. Okay, but then, so uh, the point is, you know, uh, uh, the quantity built or produced uh, may not be the same as quantity sold, but. Um, we are use, uh, we are assuming a uh, a perfect universe, right? 
a perfect universe with a perfect foresight. And in a perfect universe, uh, if you assume perfect universe, then uh, uh, we can make a perfect f forecast. And with a perfect foresight, you make a very accurate forecast, man forecast, and then there will be no excess uh, supply or excess demand, right? No shortage, no excess, no surplus. Your demand will exactly match the supply. I mean, supply will match exactly the demand. So then, you know, uh, 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 in such a universe and, and under such an assumption, uh, quantity built is always the same thing as quantity uh, sold. Okay. So anyway, uh, this side, that's quantity sold. This and Q, this side is quantity uh, built. But we assume uh, they are the same thing. Okay. And the average variable cost, uh, average variable cost is basically the cost of, you know, uh, uh, cost of, you know, uh, uh, capital, labor, and raw material. Okay. Capital, labor, and raw material uh, in case it is, you know, in case it is, you know, uh, manufacturing. If it is retail, uh, I mean, uh, I mentioned this, I believe. Um, we assumed, you know, th this balance sheet and income statement are <laughs> sort of, you know, uh, not corresponding to each other. Why? Um, the balance sheet is the balance sheet of the uh, manufacturer. Manufacturing business, and this income statement is uh, like you know income statement of a retail business. Why? Because you know uh, you only have you know uh, if you look at the uh, CGS, we only have beginning inventory, uh, net purchase. I mean, it's, it says new purchase, but you know it's net purchase. Uh, it's it's called net purchase or new purchase. You know, it's the same thing. I would, let me uh, change that to a net purchase. And this is an OWA. Uh, so beginning inventory, net purchase, you know, ending inventory, this is pretty much an OWA. Uh, there's no way, looking at this, there's no way you can tell how much of that uh, is due to capital. Right, like production equipment. How much of that is due to you know uh, labor? How much of that is you know due to uh, raw material? There's no way to break it down like that. Uh, so this is you know uh, this shows all the inventory is just finished goods in this example uh, because if it is manufacturing, you would have to have you know um, the inventory would uh, fall into uh, break into three categories, uh, raw material, uh, goods in process, and finished goods. Uh, and uh, there should be more, you know, um, further breakdown of, you know, uh, uh, how much of that is, you know, uh, uh, due to capital, how much of that is due to uh, labor, how much of that is, you know, due to raw material. But, um uh, there, you know, this is these are even broken down into um, uh, finished goods, goods in process, uh, and uh, raw materials. So, so this is pretty much, you know, uh, everything is finished goods. So that's why uh, this is retail. Typical uh, example of you know uh, retails, retail businesses income statement. However, however, this one was like this one uh, is you know very typical of manufacturing. Um, but anyway, the uh, the idea is if we can, uh, uh, so if we express uh, revenue, total revenue by its components, which is you know P times Q quantity sold and if you express the uh, total cost by its components, which is you know total fixed cost plus total variable cost, and total variable cost being you know average variable cost times quantity, right? 
Um, so Pete, uh, Pete, then you know, um, uh, we need to uh, rearrange this equation. Uh, uh, in other words, uh, we must express it in Q because Q is the unknown, quantity is the unknown, right? In other words, everything else is known. We know the price because you know, obviously, as uh, uh, we know the uh, price of what we make or what we sell, and we know the uh, uh, because that comes from all you know, um, and the data comes from you know, uh, balance sheet and income statement. So, first of all, uh, total revenue is coming from income statement, right? Remember, total revenue is coming from income statement because we know. From the in income statement, we know what it is, right? Of course, uh, we may, w it's based on a, a simplified assumption, right? In other words, we are making only one type of product, just one product, right? One type of product, right? Nothing else. Uh, in reality, we may have a product X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. We may have five uh, different products, right? Uh, and if we have five different products, then you know uh, our revenue will be each product X1 will have different price. So uh, let's call it P1, right? And uh, P2 price of the uh, uh, X2 product two, P3, P4, P5, and then the uh, and uh, the quantity sold of P1, uh, quantity sold of X1, call it Q1. Quantity sold of X2, call it Q2. Quantity sold of X3, call it Q3. Then, you know, uh, total revenue is basically sum of all, the, all these products, meaning, you know, P1 times Q1, they will give you the revenue of, total revenue of Q1, uh, revenue of Q1, X1, I'm sorry, X1, and then uh, P2 times Q2, right? P2 times Q2, that will give, you know, revenue of X2. Uh, P3 times Q3, that will give you the revenue of X3, and so on. You just, you know, uh, sum all of them, that's your total revenue, okay? So, um, but, you know, just using a uh, simplified assumption, Simplified assumption. Uh, assume that you know. Uh, assuming that we use, you know, we produce only one product, uh, and so Q P times there will be only one price because we we are selling just we are making and selling just one product, right? X one, just one product, and then uh, there will be you know uh, uh, P times Q will be, you know, simply our revenue. Total fixed cost is not something you can touch. You know, we talked about this. Total fixed cost is, you know, uh, it doesn't change with the uh, uh, production level. Doesn't change with. So it's, you know, basically initial investment and uh, operating expenses. And I, you know, in the video I told you operating expenses are. Um, Operating expenses, mainly the uh, accounting's concept. Uh, now think about it. Uh, and in the video I explained, um, fixed cost doesn't change with production level. So number of secretaries, I mean, secretaries, clerical staff, their hours, right? Number of hours or uh, a number of hours worked or the... Uh, 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 if 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 the uh, uh, production level production doubles, you will have to double the uh, number of hours uh, of the production workers, right? Assembly line workers, uh, or you must you know double their numbers. You know the higher you know uh, higher uh, two times. You know higher twice as many. 
but I told you, you know, uh, instead of, you know, hiring twice as many uh, assembly line workers, they would rather, they would rather double their hours, okay? Because later on, it will be, it won't be, you know, it will be easier to uh, uh, simply uh, uh, slash their hours than, you know, uh, uh, laying off half of them. Understand? Uh, if you, just because the demand doubled, I mean, if the demand doubled, right? Meaning, you know, uh, 100%, there's a 100% increase in demand, right? Uh, then there are only two ways you can cope with this. Either double the hours of the workers, okay? Production workers, the workers that are directly related with production, or uh, hire twice as many uh, workers, production workers as before. But then, Hiring twice as many is, you know, problematic because uh, it will be difficult to lay them off if the demand uh, goes back to normal. Now, suddenly demand is, you know, 200% uh, of the normal level. Then, you know, you might think, you know, uh, uh, think about it. Temporarily, you may hire, but, you know, once you hire twice as many workers, then, uh, Later, it will be very difficult to lay them off, right? When the demand goes back to a, a normal level, you have to fire them, right? You might think, you know, uh, you might think, you know, uh, uh, that's not a big deal. I mean, don't they always do? It? Don't don't they? You know, constantly. I mean, um, um, Walmart they hire. You know, I mean, Amazon.com or Target. They hire these workers, you know, uh, when the demand goes up, and then, you know, uh, uh, when you know uh, demand goes down, then they uh, uh, they lay them off. Doesn't that happen uh, every time? It happens because it can happen because the sales those are you know like sales jobs or you know simple simple tasks like you know just um, uh, that is replaceable, right? Um, sales clerk, sales staff, uh, they can be, they are, the thing is, you know, these jobs are not union jobs, right? Uh, and they are, they work, you know, uh, they don't get, you know, uh, fixed salary but they get you know uh commissions you know they get very uh small base salary and then they get commissions you know which is commensurate with their uh sales record okay uh and there is no union uh in in those jobs but in manufacturing a lot of you know uh, manufacturing it's union jobs and think about it if you are uh an assembly line worker in an auto auto factory, automobile factory, it's not something you can do just, you know, uh, uh, out of blue, right? Uh, it's not something you can do just, you know, uh, if you're just, you know, picked up from the street. Uh, it's not something you can have an interview and just, you know, uh, um, get started uh, the very day. Uh, it's skilled, it's called skilled labor. And the skilled labor, um, there's a union for that. I mean, for automobile assembly line, you know, um, you need, you should have been trained, right? Um, like apprentice, you know, uh, uh, you should have been trained like an apprentice, as an apprentice for uh, a long time. And then you have to, uh, you have to, Pass certain, you know, license, or you have to um, license exam, or you have to uh, be approved by that, you know, uh, 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 guild system, right? If you're an apprentice, you know, then after apprentice, uh, 
you graduate apprenticeship and then you become a journeyman or something like whatever they call it. Um, so those positions uh, are union jobs and uh, in a, an automobile automobile plant, automakers uh, plant, automate manufacturing plant, if you are working on an assembly line, uh, you cannot just you know get hired one day and get fired another day because you know uh, it's protected by union. You understand? So uh, they cannot. And so when the uh, demand uh, falls back to a normal level, uh, if you have twice as many you know uh, uh, assembly line workers, uh, it's a problem because you know. Um, the demand is, you know, not 200%. You know, it's back to the normal level, and there is no way you can uh, uh, pay, uh, keep these workers on the payroll. So uh, that's why I'm saying, you know, uh, uh, more realistic solution is instead of hiring uh, twice as many workers, they simply, you know, uh, uh, increase a uh, double the uh, hours, right? So then, you know, they can scale back later on if the, uh, but anyway, um, no, secretaries are a good example of fixed cost because you don't need to increase the uh, secretary's hours just because the demand uh, doubled because secretaries not, are not directly uh, involved in production activity. Um, their hours don't need to be doubled. Or well, the number of secretaries don't need to be doubled, so they are part of the uh, uh, fixed cost. And also, you know, something like rent. Rent is fixed, right? Um, uh, so um, operating expenses are basically, uh, 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 and also uh, the initial investment. Initial investment means what? If you're manufacturing, uh, you have to. You must have, you know, plant and equipment. It goes without saying there can be no manufacturing without plant and equipment, right? Makes sense. But you know, plant and equipment is the initial investment. In other words, it's a sunk cost. Uh, you have to pay that cost even before you start the production, because the you know there has to be you know uh, the plant must be built right and the equipment must be uh, installed in the plant before you even start the production because um, only when you start the production then there can be sale then there can be revenue but even before you sell produce and sell anything right uh, the plant and equipment in our example, it comes to almost like $10 million. A lot of it is plant and equipment, right? Uh, the, uh, uh, the majority of the, uh, the balance sheet uh, is plant and equipment, right? So uh, it must be already incurred. That expense must have already been incurred, which is called initial investment. Make sense? Now, initial investment doesn't depend on initial de initial investment doesn't depend on the uh, production level. I mean, uh, demand. In other words, you know how many units you produce. Um, actually, production capacity production capacity is production capacity is determined by initial investment. You understand? Um, in other words, output capacity is uh, output capacity depends on the initial investment. Think about it. Ten million dollars can build uh, a certain sized plant, right? With ten million dollars, uh, that plant, uh, the size is limited by what ten million dollars can buy, and then. That means, you know, size of the plant means also the capacity of the plant. So with $10 million, the, the plant can, the maximum capacity would be 
like, you know, uh, 10,000 vehicles, 10,000 cars per month. Okay, with, that's what $10 million can uh, build. That's what $10 million can pay for. You understand? $10 million uh, don't directly produce uh, the cars, but it $10 million pay for the construction of that plant and the equipment that goes into it. Right? You get that? Uh, Halftime check. So let's see how many of you are there. I see only two people. Huh? Sarah, are you there? Oh, Monique, you are there. Good. Sarah, you're there. So you follow, right? What I'm talking, you've been following what I'm talking about, right? Yes. Okay. The plant's, uh, manufacturing plant's capacity is determined by the initial investment. Okay. So if, you know, uh, 10,000 cars, is the maximum capacity of that plant. Um, then if you invested like, you know, I mean, if the initial investment was $100 million, think about it, if the initial investment was $100 million, then that uh, your production capacity uh, of your plant uh, most likely would have been 10 times that. You know, you may be, you know, uh, you may churn out like, you know, um, 100,000 cars per month, right? It doesn't have to be exactly that linear uh, relationship, but, you know, pretty much, you know, this, uh, you know, a uh, rough idea, right? That, that would be a good approximation, right? So um, that initial investment, uh, microeconomics focuses more on that initial investment. When they say total fixed cost, uh, focuses you know, uh, mainly on that um, initial investment. But you know, uh, 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 accounting kind of you know uh, focuses on uh, month to month, you know, or quarter to quarter uh, uh, fixed cost. So it's like you know, uh, think about it. Um, they can spread it in, in, in accounting. The, the operating expenses will also include initial investment, but it is spread over, it's spread over the life of the uh, uh, service life of that asset. Service life of that asset. The, the concept of service life is kind of artificial, but you know, it has to do with the depreciation. But you know, we'll get to that later. So think about it. We can we can express the break-even condition like that. Break-even happens, you know, when total revenue is equal to total cost, and total cost breaks down into a uh, uh, total cost is you know uh, uh, total cost consists of total fixed cost uh, plus total variable cost, and total revenue is then also. Uh, uh, the result of price times quantity, and uh, total, uh, the right-hand side, uh, total variable cost is average variable cost, which is uh, production cost per unit, right? And production cost per unit is basically capital uh, per unit, right? The capital cost that goes into that labor cost that goes into that you know, per unit, uh, Material, uh, you know, per unit, it can break down further. But you know, we just, you know, uh, 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 you know, aggregate it into uh, average variable cost. The total, because uh, total variable cost depends on the uh, quantity built, right? Think about it. If you built ten thousand units, right? Ten thousand units. That's you know basically uh, production cost per unit times ten thousand, and if you sold also you know ten thousand, then you know price per unit times ten thousand, right? So 
our question is, you know, um, Q is the unknown. The quantity is the uh, unknown. Price is everything else is known. Then what do we need to do? We need to solve this equation for Q. Since Q is the only unknown, uh, and how do you uh, uh, solve the equation? You have to first, you know, uh, collect the like terms. You must collect the like terms. So this term has Q, this term has Q. So if I move it to the uh, left-hand side, then um, uh, the sign changes. You know, so, and then you factor out the common factor, okay, uh, quantity. And then uh, on the right hand, in the right-hand side, it's total fixed cost. So then quantity is TFC over P minus AVC, right? Uh, price minus uh, average variable cost. They also call this contribution margin, but that, you know, all the words are not necessary, you know. We already understand what this is. This is the profit margin, if you, right? Uh, actually, you know, uh, um, uh, the, the uh, contribution margin or gross margin, because you remember, uh, Gross profit or gross margin is, you know, when you subtract uh, in the uh, income statement, if you subtract uh, uh, CGS from CGS from income, uh, the uh, net revenue, then that's sales revenue, right? Then that's the uh, uh, gross margin or uh, gross profit. Right? So this is exactly gross margin. You know, they also call it contribution margin. And uh, this Q is called break-even quantity or break-even output level, break-even. Uh, so if we know where um, graphically, graphically, um, it can be represented like this. Revenue, this blue straight line is revenue, total revenue. And we assume total revenue is growing linearly, you know, uh, like a straight line. But you will see later, revenue is not really, grow, uh, it's not going to be a straight line like that. Eventually, it's going to be a, uh, a, uh, a parabola, a curve, right? It's going to go. It's going to go up, it uh, hits the uh, maximum um, point or the uh, apex, and then uh, it turns around, you know, so it, it, it's a curve, it's a curvature, and also total cost, the red line is total cost, and it's not really a straight line, it will show also curvature, but it's going to be like, um, I don't know if I have it. If I put it here, no, I don't think I put it there. Where did I put it? But if I were to draw it, I wish I could, uh, okay. I'm gonna draw it somewhere. Maybe like here. So, uh, to, uh, if I were to draw it again here, ah, uh, oh, yeah, 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 I'm sorry. I, it's not, uh, it doesn't, it's not very straight, but, uh, okay. Um, so, the horizontal axis, this quantity, right? Um, output level and the vertical axis is dollars, right? So so total revenue will 
look like a straight line, but uh, eventually, I, I'm going to redo this eventually. Uh, total revenue will look like this. Okay. And then, and think about it. It starts from zero because think about it. When you sell zero unit, your revenue is zero, right? Uh, however, okay. However, uh, total cost doesn't start from zero starts from because we have the total fixed cost right yes you're right you're right and who's this sarah was it sarah yeah it's me sir okay so you got you got you know yeah another 0 0.25 for that answer yes because um whether you produce zero unit or you know whether you produce something or nothing, right? Um, we, you already you already uh, uh, saddled with you already saddled with you're sitting on already. You're, in other words, you're already sitting on the uh, total fixed cost. In other words, initial investment, right? You still have to pay rent. Uh, uh, you're re you have already incurred the uh, uh, construction cost uh, for the plant, and you pay for the equipment, right, to you know go into the plant, uh, which is total fixed cost. And let's say you don't even have a plant. I mean, you are a uh, uh, just a uh, retail business. But even if you're a retail business, right, um, you have to pay rent whether there is any sale or not, right? You already, so uh, total cost starts from, not from zero, but from some, you know, positive number. Um, and then there's a, uh, it increases, you know, uh, early on. And then uh, it, this looks like a flat line, but it's not really a flat line. And there's a, a slight, it's just the, my drawing. Uh, it, it, it would have some, you know, um, uh, slope, and you know uh, it increases. You know um, the slope increases. The, the, the slope is you know um, again um, uh, slope increases. You know after a certain you know uh, uh, point. So you can tell. You can tell. Um, so what does this mean? What this means is, you know, um, uh, at this point, total revenue is equal to total cost, right? At that point, total revenue is equal to. And here too. Total revenue is equal to total cost but if total revenue is equal to total cost what does that mean profit is zero yes that's where the company breaks even so that's where the uh, total revenue is equal to total cost and we have two of them this is also where total revenue is equal to total cost so we have two points, two break-even points where profit is zero. Uh, call this, you know, we can call this B break-even one. And it's quantity, of course, you know, that means, you know, output level, right? Call this break-even two. And think about it. Before you reach break-even one, then 
profit is negative because cost is always above revenue. Make sense? Here, profit is negative here. But at this point, profit is zero. Now here in this, you know, between this point and this point in this range, right? Between B1 and B2, profit is always positive, right? Profit is always positive, right? Right? Because total revenue is greater than, always greater than, uh, total cost. And at this point, again, then profit is zero again. And then past that point, you know, past that point, Just like here, profit is again negative. Okay, you get the idea. So uh, then think about it. Somewhere um, we can find, we can pinpoint where the profit will be maximized because uh, the prof if we can find the uh, output level where you know the the gap between total revenue and total cost is maximum, right? This is where the profit is maximum, right? Uh, and if we can, let's say, if we can pinpoint, right, that point, right, where, you know, profit is max, right? I mean, uh, maximum profit output level. I mean, uh, here, Profit will be maximum, right? But you know, uh, that's that's the next level. I mean, uh, um, that's what the economics is all about. Economics will uh, teach you how to uh, exactly nail this. But you know, uh, in general, uh, the point is, as long as we are in this range, operating uh, uh, within this range, then uh our you know um uh, we are always will always make profit and of course so that is the uh, uh purpose of the uh break even analysis because um this diagram is as i said a very simplified one because uh it doesn't show i mean it's only showing it's only showing this range, right? It's just a, a magnification of this range. Uh, it's not showing the full picture. Uh, but initially, initially, the point, uh, the purpose is initially, uh, we want to find the, you know, uh, uh, bre uh, first break-even point because then, uh, if we produce above that level. If you produce above that level, then uh, we are guaranteed profit, right? Knowing where this happens is important because not because we want to uh, produce at this level, but this is the threshold. We must produce above that level, right, uh, to end up in profit. And also, um, we don't want to go beyond the second break-even point. Right? We don't want to go beyond that second break-even point because then again, uh, uh, we won't have any profit. If, you know, um, we will have loss if we go beyond that. And also, this gives you an idea. Uh, of course, uh, as I said, you know, in microeconomics, you know, uh, you can find, you know, uh, exact, you know, uh, you can nail exact, you know, uh, maximum 
uh, profit out uh, profit level or output level, uh, and also it tell it it uh, tells us that the um, that revenue maximization is not necessarily profit maximization. You understand why? Because revenue will be maximized here. This is where total revenue is maximum. This is where total revenue is maximum. <laughs> This is where total revenue is maximum. But that's not where the profit is maximum, right? Uh, you see? Uh, the output level where revenue is maximized is not the same point as the uh, uh, profit maximizing point. This is where Revenue maximization happens, right? But this is where the profit maximization happens. Okay, makes sense. Um, all right. So then, you know, uh, um, if you understand this, now it's not a difficult thing to uh, do the uh, 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 break-even analysis. Uh, so maybe I'll use here. the data from here. Okay, so I don't have any price data. So it's uh, if price is given, price and uh, average variable cost is given, then we can do. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, let me do it. Okay, let me do it here. Um, Pop that in. Let me build a table here. So let me. Let me so what we need is um, price uh, okay, let me.
도로 맞춰서 콘크리트 and then revenue total oh. cost And we're gonna have to uh, use some assumptions, you know, and uh, profit. Let me insert. Okay, that's profit, right? And then, uh, suppose we are uh, making. Uh, businesses, uh, you know, some uh, GPS device, and the uh, uh, our selling price is the GPS device. The selling price is let's say fifty-five dollars. Okay. And um, average variable cost is average variable cost is uh, uh, let's say thirty dollars. Let's say total fixed cost is, and the total fixed cost in this case is you know. Uh, the raw, you know, the uh, mostly initial investment, right? Uh, I mean, compared to the initial investment, the month to month or, you know, um, uh, quarter to quarter, month to month, you know, uh, operating expenses would be very, you know, uh, minimal, uh, uh, insignificant. So initial investment in the uh, in this business was, let's say, uh, 90 9.5 million dollars suppose you know that's not that even that much nine point oh that's about 95 million no let's just say yeah that's the initial investment and this is our unknown right this is our unknown but always you um, and the total revenue we enter, you know, literally uh, by definition is P times Q, right? And total variable cost is also uh, AVC times Q, average variable cost times Q. Right. <clears throat> Total fixed cost is just you know, it's fixed, so um, it's not going to change. I mean, uh, your initial investment in this plant is already fixed. You know that this 9.55 uh, million is uh, what it costs to build this plant, right? Then, by definition. Total cost is some of these two numbers, right? 
some of those two numbers. You can just do, you know, uh, 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 V37 plus V38, doesn't matter. It's not really a big deal. And right now, because there's nothing here, it's going to be just, and by definition, our uh, profit is total revenue minus total cost. Actually, uh, this is, rather than profit, I should say, I should call it EBIT, right? Or operating profit. Right, uh, so I will annotate that. This is actually, you know, uh, it's called profit, but it's actually. Um, well, someone asked the questions. I, as I told you, I can't see it. Uh, this is, you know, uh, uh, operating profit, operating income, you know, EBIT. Okay, so these cells I will use, you know, like a, um, uh, a, a light uh, olive or drab, because you know, I don't want. It. And then I would put a. Um, now is the time to uh, put that. Uh, Okay, so, or maybe I can, you know, uh, uh, I can break it up. Uh, because this is the, um, data cell, uh, you know, uh, that's data table, uh, table that contains initial data. This is, you know, um, Calculation on you know uh, uh, this is the cell that has the uh, the calculation. So maybe I'll put uh, insert one and then. Uh, Okay, this way, I'm done. So, um, what do I do to find break even, you know, uh, break even level, break even output level? All I need to do is just, you know, uh, follow the formula. I mean, the formula is, you know, what? It's in the slide, but uh, it's uh, TFC over, so, you know, uh, P minus. AVC, right? There you go. And this is what? Ah, uh, this is um, in units, right? It means you know, three hundred eighty-two thousand units, right? It's in units, right? So I'm gonna also. Units. Okay. And this is an outbreak even quantity. QBE. Break even output level. Make it a subscript. Okay. I will, uh, I will make it the number so it would have 
what's happening. If it is number, it should have a comma. No, it's not showing. Let's leave it as a channel. Okay, so let me check uh, what's in there. Someone. Oh, there's no. What was that? What was that uh, prompt then? You know, if nobody was putting anything, nobody. If nobody put anything in the. Uh, uh, it was me, Professor. I just I wanna help you to solve the missing variable. Oh, oh okay. Well, oh, the missing variable. Okay, you mean the uh, Q, right? The missing variable. There was only uh, you know uh, uh, one on the yeah. It's Q. You know, it's it's done. You have what? You have you have a different you have a different answer. Uh, you have no. a different answer? No. Okay. All righty. So, and that that con that is confirmed. I mean, it checks out. Why? Because look at the profit. Profit is zero. Right? Profit is zero. With that quantity, right? Profit is zero. Okay. This way, uh, yeah, we did, you know, uh, uh, let me probably I can move them. Uh, I can I can move it around so it will be next to the uh, uh, this diagram. Oh no, and the the diagram gets all okay. Uh, what can I do? Um, oh, this thing is all moved around. I didn't put it that, was it me? Uh, I'll have to. Oh no, this is, oh, what happened? I will have to move these dots one by one. This is crazy. Move all these dots again. I should have saved it. Oh, you know, I, I can't do it now, but you know, I'm gonna you get the idea, right? I can't um this thing. I should I should have put it into a like you know um uh, this is a, a whole you know disaster. Uh, 
All right, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to fix that uh, later. So um, we took care of the uh, break even uh, uh, break even analysis. So then the next thing. Um, so I don't think we can get to even you know uh, ratio analysis today, but you know uh, it's gonna take a, it takes more than two hours. I mean tomorrow alone is not gonna be possible. But you know we'll uh, I'll have to give it a best shot. So here, um, the, another, the, the other thing that um, um, it was also all covered in the uh, main video, uh, but the horizontal analysis and vertical analysis, uh, that's what they call, uh, but this is really not nothing. Now they call this, you know, uh, vertical analysis, but you know, I want you to, uh, I just want to uh, uh, address this. The font is not right. Okay. Now, this is what they call vertical analysis, and I don't really like the name because it's not really, uh, I would like to actually um, put these things in, never mind. And this is really not uh, a difficult thing. I mean, you know, um, some people get the kick out of it. Um, what kind of, uh, what should I use maybe? Something like orange. Maybe not that. Maybe this one. Um, uh, we get the idea. This is, you know, basically balance sheet, right? This is balance sheet. And we can easily, you know, it's not a big deal. We can easily get the... Uh, Uh, we can easily find the sum of these line items. These are line items in the uh, current assets. So total current assets, uh, all we need to do is simply use the auto sum command, auto sum, and then it just, you know, uh, uh, sums up everything above it. Okay, this also auto sum, right? And uh, total assets is some of these two line items, of course, and also some, some of these, you know, two, this, and, the comma is and, you know, it's everyone, 
it's a common sense. Comma is, you know, and. It's called Oxford and. And then um, we have also uh, using auto sum. Refined. And uh, non current liabilities, total non current liabilities using auto sum, we find. Okay. Total liabilities, of course, is the sum of the uh, non current and current. Current and non current, right? Liabilities. There you go. Now, uh, one thing is missing, which is equity. So, um, I'm gonna also maybe this one. How do we know what equity is? Um, it wasn't given, but at least you know we know by the uh, definition of balance sheet, total liabilities and equity must be equal to this. Isn't it right? Total liabilities and equity must be equal to total assets. So therefore, if I make it equal to that. Any question? No, I'm saying just give me the 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 equity is the total asset minus the liability. Yeah, yeah, of course. Total total equity is you know basically uh, total assets minus li total liability, or because it's total liability plus equity. From this, you subtract, right? Total liability, and uh, that's you know uh, that's. Uh, equity. So let me. This was not the color. What was it? Okay. So that, that wasn't. So uh, because by definition, total liabilities plus equity. This is total liabilities plus equity, which is equal to total assets. So all you need to do is from this subtract total liabilities. Well, you can subtract uh, this from this. It's the same thing. Okay, and then uh, that that much is nothing. That much is you know uh, uh, what they call vertical analysis is actually um, uh, what percentage is finding the percentage of each line item out of total assets. Okay, it's finding the um, so cash. How much of how, what percentage of the total assets is it? Well, of course, you got to divide everything, every line item. We express every line item as percentage of the total assets. Okay, so then uh, I can do it easily by you know if I lock, if I lock total assets. In other words, if I lock, right? You know how to lock by you know. Um, um, F hitting F4, if I lock it, and then just drag it down. Okay, and then you know we take care of it in a single, and then uh, you know wherever there is no data, I mean, don't leave it like this. If you leave it like this, you'll lose points. Okay, because uh, it's. We need to clean up, you know. We need to do the housekeeping because if it wasn't, you know, uh, if there was any, uh, if there wasn't any data there, you know, you gotta clean it up, right? You gotta clean it. Then we have this, you know, um, and this is called, you know, uh, uh, vertical analysis because we are maybe. Uh, I'm not that good. What do I? That's why. Anyway, that's what they wanted, right? They, so, um, the term vertical analysis is actually, you know, uh, really nothing. You know, I mean, uh, it just goes vertical, but, you know, naming it like that. Hmm. Uh, that sounds a bit, you know, uh, childish. I, I would prefer 
uh, it's called, you know, rather, you know, um, Um, dois, um, dois, três, quatro, cinco, seis. Well, uh, you know, it's like, you know, compositional, you know, component analysis or, you know, um, uh, 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 I would call it, you know, uh, uh, by a different name. Uh, the name escapes me, you know, because there was a name that I used in the video. Uh, yeah, component analysis or whatever would be a better. Just because, so we can tell, oh, if this company has uh, too much debt, I mean, look at the total liabilities, 83%, 83%, of the total assets is li total liability. That means only about 16% is equity. Meaning, uh, what does this mean? Uh, we're gonna, this is gonna be, uh, again, repeated in the uh, ratio analysis. But if we uh, look into the debt ratio, right? Um, there are five categories of ratios, uh, profitability category, asset management category, liquidity category, uh, the activity category, activity range, and the debt management category, uh, you know, um, okay, profitability category, uh, ratio category, uh, liquidity category, asset management category, which is also called, you know, uh, activity, debt management category and uh, valuation category, market valuation, uh, valuation category. Um, especially, you know, um, it's important to look into the uh, debt management category because um, if the company has too much debt, right, the profit margin will go down because a lot of it is uh, a lot of the, the EBIT, a lot of the operating profit operating or uh, income will be siphoned off, will be drained by uh, servicing the debt, you know, paying interest. And, you know, in, uh, in case of bond, you know, uh, uh, it will be most of the times it's just the interest payment. Uh, but if it is uh, uh, like, you know, a, a mortgage, you know, uh, you're, you know, uh, paying, you know, principal and interest, you know, uh, uh, every month. So the burden is too high, right? But this is, you know, just the balance sheet, you know, it doesn't show, you know, the income state. I mean, even in the income statement, it will be exactly reflected in the income statement that the company is too heavily burdened, right, by uh, a lot of debt, okay? So the next is, you know, the next thing is called, you know, I'm going to also, it is already, I don't know. The next is called, uh, horizontal analysis, but that, that again is not a very good name because I said before, I said this before, um, uh, just because it's horizontal. Uh, I mean, it's not really, you know, um, uh, it's just, you know, um, uh, comparison of two years, you know. Obviously, if you're comparing the uh, balance sheet of time zero and time one, you will see the change, you know. It's all about change. So uh, a better name is... Um, uh, you know, uh, intertemporal analysis, or you know, intertemporal meaning you know, uh, uh, two time periods, right? Between two time periods. So I'm gonna. So let's delete uh, everything except the uh, initial 
uh, data, initial given data. I'm going to change. Okay, uh, and so far, this is just the uh, vertical analysis, right? In other words, column B, column B and C are, you know, just um, vertical analysis so far, right? Isn't that right? Because we just find uh, uh, some of these line items, so using auto sum, right? Okay, and you can simply, you know, um, right, even, you know, copy it over, also using auto sum, right? And you can tell how much, you know, uh, between 2008 and 2009, right, uh, how much has changed, you know, uh, total current assets uh, increased by uh, it increased by, you know, uh, 2,000. You can, you know, total assets increased by, you know, uh, like, you know, uh, 150,000. Uh, well, you know, it's not a, a difficult thing so far. It's just, you know, uh, auto song, auto song, and uh, uh, again, auto song. And the total liability is, of course, the sum of these two numbers, right? Let's see, yeah, B36. And then uh, balance sheet must be balanced out, so um, must be the same thing here. It must be the same thing here. Or well, vice versa. You can do this first. Equity, um, um, you can find equity by, you know, uh, subtracting from this, subtracting this from this, right? And then you can, you know, um, And because it's just, you know, uh, it's like uh, three equals two plus one, what is two, you know, three minus one, you know, um, same concept. Uh, and then you can simply, you know, sum of these two, right? Either way, it's fine. Now, the next question is then, uh, how much did it, uh, how much, you know, uh, has it changed? In in dollar amount, in dollar amount, right? Of course, you know, uh, it's 2009 minus 2008 uh, dollar values, right? Everything here, and you can just drag it down. Again, I want you to, clear out wherever, you know, there shouldn't be anything, but there's no data. 
I mean, that's absence, you know, there's, you know, absence of data, so there should be no, right? There should be nothing there. You need to clear out everything where there's nothing, right? Absence of data. No data, no data, right? There is, it's just you know, a blank cell. Okay, and then in dollar in dollar amount there was a decrease actually you know cash decreased you know by you know two thousand in in terms of percentage you know uh, uh, this much decreased portion is this and so you divide it by uh, from you know what was there originally right. Okay, it's got to be negative because the change is in a negative amount in percentage is also negative. And you just drag it down because it's based on the old, you know, the same concept. And I will drag it down like this, through and through. And again, uh, wherever there is no data, you got to clean it up. I'm going to clean it up all together later. Uh, because you know, anyway, there's going to be. Uh, so, uh, and here in 2000, uh, what is this? Um, this column, that's you know, vertical analysis. This column is vertical analysis, right? This column is uh, in 2009. Uh, so, uh, before we do that, you know, we may not even do that because you know, it's vertical analysis. Starting new. Okay. And what they call uh, horizontal analysis is this part. Oh, we're almost done. So I'm going to uh, stop here. So now we can tell how much each line item has increased or decreased and uh, cash look cash decreased by 16 almost 17 percent and uh, question it's analysis it's the uh, interpretation that's that's important it's not just the uh, so is it good or bad is this a good sign or bad sign cash balance decreased is this a good sign or bad sign Anyone? Cash increase or decrease? Yeah, but you know, it, it decreased. It's obvious. I'm not asking whether it increased or decreased. It it decreased clearly. Right. right? What was the question? If it's good or bad? The question is: is this, a, is this a good sign or bad sign? Is it the good news or bad news? What's the interpretation? Cash holding went down. Is that a good thing or bad thing? It's a bad thing, I think. It's not necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, it depends it's on the current liability if you're paying off your debt. No, 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 no. Current. First of all, look at the uh, look at the big number. Total current assets went up. Right. It increased by three three percent, three point seven one seven percent. Right. Mm -hmm. Total, and so if the current assets went up, that's a good thing, definitely. Mm -hmm. It's a good thing. And also look at the uh, uh, the big picture. Total assets went up by 11.11 percent. .11%. So that's clearly a good thing, right? When total assets went up, that also means total liabilities and equity went up by 11 percent. Because if it went up by 11, this this was. But then, where did the uh, increase mostly come from? Equity went up. Mostly equity went up. That's a good thing. And the liabilities went down by about 2%. So that's a good thing. As the liabilities went down, uh, that's a good thing. 
of course, you know, depending on the uh, whether you know uh, 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 whether we want to um, uh, uh, increase leverage to uh, uh, push up our stock price, you know, um, uh, uh, you know, it's a different thing. But you know, uh, we're not even at that level. So just by looking at this, you know, when equity went up. The total assets went up, and that's mostly from the increase in equity. It's a good thing, definitely, right? And the liabilities went down. It's a good thing. Um, uh, but you know, looking at the and uh, non-current liabilities, in other words, long-term debts went down by three percent. Also, it's a positive signal. Positive signal, and uh, current liabilities. There was no change in current liabilities. Uh, it's neither bad, it's neither positive nor you know uh, negative. But you know, um, uh, at least you know our current liabilities didn't uh, uh, increase. That's uh, that's not a bad thing. Um, and uh, looking at the uh, total assets, you know, of course we we know it went up. Uh, and most of that. Um, Increase in uh, total assets originated from in, uh, increase in total non-current assets. In other words, fixed assets like plant and equipment, right? If the increase, if there was a like 18% increase in uh, fixed assets, what does that mean? Our production capacity. Uh, that that's mostly you know from uh, plant and equipment. So our if our plant and equipment increased by uh, 18%, what does that mean? Our production capacity increased by 18%. So that's definitely a good thing. It's a good thing. And a lot of it, look, uh, uh, most of it, equipment, okay, increase in equipment was only 16, but still, it's not a bad thing. Equipment increased by 16%, almost 17%. And a lot of it was the increased due to acquisition of buildings well it's not a bad thing either because if we have more buildings uh, so our production capacity uh didn't increase that much um because it wasn't mainly plant and equipment but it was increasing building i mean look if we have if our uh holding of building increased by 62 percent uh, look that building could be uh you know um uh, least rented out. It could be rented out. It generates income, right? If if this building was, you know, like in the uh, midtown Manhattan, oh, we will have a lot of, you know, rental income. Uh, maybe, you know, um, um, it's not plant space, but it generates income, right? Land, there was no change in land. Fine, you know, uh, 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 Maybe you know uh, we don't have land. Uh, there was no increase in land because our you know plant didn't you know we didn't uh, in increase the uh, plant capacity. We didn't build new plant. Um, but generally, all the good s signals from the uh, 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 fixed assets. And then I said cash increase uh, decrease in cash holding is not necessarily a bad thing. Why? Overall, your Total current has current assets increased by 3.17. So that means uh, somewhere else it increased, and a lot of it, a lot of the increase in the uh, uh, current assets came from securities. Security holding increased by 66 percent. That is definitely a good thing. And look, cash holding going down. Uh, what does that mean? Cash holding is the uh, um, uh, the money in the uh, uh, money in the checking account, the current account, check, current account, which means checking account. Now, does your cash holding, the money in the checking account, earn any money? Hmm? Sarah, does does the does the money in your checking account earn any money? Does it earn any return? Are you there? Nobody's. I am here, Professor. My cashing account doesn't increase any. There's no earnings. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, money, money. Yeah, yeah. Was it money? Yeah. Okay, money. Cash holding doesn't earn anything because you put money in the uh, bank, uh, checking account. Checking account hardly pays you any. Checking account doesn't pay you anything. So it doesn't earn any return. Whereas, uh, okay. so whatever whatever was whatever decreased here was you know went to the increase of securities you understand mm -hmm. in other words what decreased here exactly two thousand dollars decreased in cash holdings went to securities security. such as stocks and bonds so the the money moved from uh just you know plain cash holding that doesn't non-interest bearing non-interest bearing uh cash holdings to interest bearing assets so that's a good thing right and in terms of liquidity uh, you need you know this two thousand dollars you know uh, urgently no problem you can sell i mean if these are stocks you know you can sell and you know instantaneously right turn it into cash there's and the accounts receivable increased by six thousand what does that mean is that a good thing or bad thing it's a good thing. It's a good thing. I mean, some of the accounts receivable are promissory notes, right? Uh, no matter what. And some of them are credit sales, right? Invoices. Uh, that means our sale increased. Our sale has increased, right? Um, of course, you know, um, if it can get uh, cash, if it can get cashed in ASAP, uh, great. Uh, it will take some time to uh, turn it into ca turn it into cash, but you know, once again, that's what the uh, simple discount is all about. Factoring. That's what the factoring is all about. You don't have to keep holding. Um, you don't have to keep holding on to the uh, promissory notes or invoices until maturity. Uh, you can cash it uh, by selling it to the bank immediately. So. Uh, but anyway, our sale, that means our sale increased. So it's a good thing. It's our revenue, right? Increase, increased in our revenue. Inventory, inventory decreased, you know, uh, um, by 18%. Good thing or bad thing? Now, um, it is, it is, you know, uh, uh, it's generally, a it's a good thing because, first of all, if you're a manufacturer, right? If you're a manufacturer, our inventory would consist of three things, you know, uh, raw material, uh, goods in process, and finished goods. I mean, if you're a manufacturer, finished goods will, should not remain on our in our facility for long because if our finished goods are, uh, you know, piled up in our uh, facilities, what does that mean? We are making things That's that don't way. sell, right? But, you know... Um, uh, the finished goods, as soon as they are, fin uh, you know, uh, as as soon as they come out of our production line, if they get shipped out to our retailers or wholesalers, then our uh, finished goods inventory goes down. And other inventory, uh, raw materials. If raw material inventory, we don't want to keep. Manufacturers don't want to keep a huge pile of raw material because it costs us money, right? It costs us, you know, warehousing cost. It costs us to wear, uh, to keep it in the warehouse. And the second, we must insure it. There's insurance cost, right? Inventory carrying cost, right? Now, again, you might wonder, um, uh, if we have a warehouse of our own, uh, we don't, you know, isn't it for free? Look, even if we have a, a warehouse, you must consider an opportunity cost. If our raw material is not sitting there, we can rent it out. And we can, uh, that will generate income. But, you know, uh, by the raw material, by our raw material sitting there, it, take, it, it takes that opportunity away, right? So no manufacturer wants to uh, keep a huge pile of raw material. That's why, you know, they call, you know, that's what, you know, they like just-in-time inventory, just-in-time, right? So that, you know... Uh, the inventory supply, uh, the raw material supplier will uh, 
ship it just in time to us, just in time for our production to start. So that's so if our inventory went down, um, that means you know it got either sold, you know, I mean if it is finished goods, they got sold, right? The pile of inventory uh, of finished goods, they got sold. It's a good thing. And if it is raw material, um, uh, we don't have we don't keep that much raw material on our site, so it's a good thing. And overall sign is overall sign total current assets increased and uh, total assets increased by it. So this is the horizontal analysis, okay? And not just the mechanical uh, calculation. It's not that difficult mechanical calculation, uh, but no interpretation. How do we you know uh, understand this, right? Uh, that's more important. All right, so I guess, you know, uh, that's fine. Uh, oh, two hour, 15 minutes, so I'll have to, uh, we didn't, we were not able to do the uh, rational analysis, but that has to be done tomorrow, okay? Uh, so um, I will see you guys tomorrow at the same time at three o'clock sharp, okay? And I will uh, stop recording. Uh, take care. And more. Bye, Professor. All right, take care now. I will see you tomorrow. I will, I'm signing out.